Science tells us we must reduce carbon emissions to zero by mid-century. The reality is, is that after we have done all we can to reduce and avoid emissions, we will still produce a residual amount. So we therefore will need to pull carbon out of the atmosphere and store it in order to reach that zero or net zero target by 2050. But what is most important is the pathway which we must consider is important as the destination. Countries and companies must deliver today deep emission cuts, and only after that should they consider purchasing from others removal of carbon. We can't keep emitting the amount of business as usual or even slowly reduce our emissions and think we can easily suck carbon out of the atmosphere. We don't have the enough land or the technological capability to plant enough trees or to produce enough machines to directly remove carbon from the atmosphere in order to balance or cancel out the amount of emissions we are producing today. At WWF, we say that this must be the decade of action for reducing our emissions and the decade of readiness for investing in technologies to store and remove carbon. In other words, let's focus on reducing our emissions today and preparing ourselves to store and, and remove emissions by mid-century. To make carbon pricing ambitious and powerful, we must set a price that's high enough to incentivize a shift in economic behavior. The CPLC proposed in the United States a price, uh, an ambitious price of $40 a ton, rising every year by 5% over inflation. And to have an even more ambition, we must institute carbon pricing alongside other climate policies and regulations. But most importantly, to be inclusive and to be equitable, we must implement carbon pricing in a way that it does not add an added burden to those who can afford it least. One way to do that is to have a carbon dividend, which takes the revenue from carbon pricing and brings it back into the pockets of those who need it the most.